At the time of filming this, many schools in England certainly are not sure about singing. They're worried about it and they're either not doing it at all or doing it in a very restrictive way. It's a really emotive issue and one that lots of teachers are concerned about. So how do you continue to make the most of songs, learning about songs and enjoying songs when you're not sure whether you can sing. Today we're going to explore body percussion, look at how body percussion can help us get to know songs, enjoy songs in school and how you can get better at teaching body percussion. I'm Anthony and this is EdTech Music where we look at how technology can help teachers deliver music with more enjoyment, engagement and fun. Today we're talking about developing music making through body percussion, looking at exploring rhythm, pulse and phrasing within music and developing children's ability to play together. So here are my top reasons why you want to develop use of body percussion in your classroom and tips to get better at teaching it. So number one, leveraging the power of body percussion because it's always with them. They can do it anywhere, in class, queuing up for lunch, out in the field, whatever. Second, at this time when we're concerned about hygiene, there's no passing of instruments, passing of germs between children, because they're just using what's on them at the time, their limbs. And third of all, it still develops that use of voice, but this time internal voice, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Secondly, using body percussion allows you to develop your own graphic scoring, your own way of writing music. And this is really important because it allows children to develop a vocabulary, visually, that they can then use in creating their own music. And actually composition and creating in music is the highest elevation that we're looking to get children to, where they use what you have given them to then create their own music later. And there's a few great ones I want to share on this. Um, the first one is from The Element by Ken Robinson, who says, to be creative, you actually have to do something. Young children are wonderfully confident in their own imaginations. Most of us lose this confidence as we grow up. Um, and then another one which I've, I've come across from Steve Jobs, which says, creativity is just connecting things. Um, he said, when you ask creative people how they did something, they feel a little guilty because they don't really do it. They just saw something. It seemed obvious to them after a while. And I think those quotes really put this in context, that what we're trying to do is, through graphic scoring, another way of giving children a vocabulary and a way of writing down their ideas when they develop their own music. So tip three is to take your own pictures of body percussion symbols. And this is great for lots of reasons. First of all, it's fun. Children enjoy it. They can do it themselves as well as the ones that you take. And because the pictures are relevant and meaningful, they have more engagement and more ownership of it as soon as they use them. So here's some photos I took in readiness for an assembly I was delivering across the whole trust. I wanted all of the classes in the different schools of the trust to join in the assembly virtually, as we normally do, but rather than singing together, which we would normally want to do, this way we could all play body percussion as part of a song. So on this PowerPoint slide, you can see I've got different versions of the same picture. What I want to do is get to the option C, where I've got nice rounded corners, and it's nice and simple. I can resize it down to where I can use lots of this as an icon, and it's not going to be confusing. So let's look at that first option here, clicking on that. And up in the picture format menu that appears when I click on a picture, I'm then choosing the kind of middle option there, reflected rounded rectangle, which gives me what I have on B. But what I don't want is that reflection below because it just makes it confusing. So let's have a look in the options next to picture format. I'm going to go into picture effects and then in reflection I'm just going to turn that off. So tip four is about combining your graphic score icons in a meaningful way. We might represent this with our new graphics as But actually, we can go a step further, and teachers invent great phrases for this. I really like this one because it gives children a chance to tease me about how much tea I drink. So here we've got tea, tea, coffee, tea, 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 coffee, tea. Another nice one is Coke, Coke, Pepsi, Coke, 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 Pepsi, Coke. And that eventually allows us to lead on to proper learning of crotchets and quavers at the bottom. So I would recommend for all teachers to try to work with a combination of these things as often as possible. In this way, we're helping children develop that sight vocabulary for ways to represent sounds that are so useful when we know the end goal is for them not just to be able to play music, but also compose. So tip five is to practice using your system often. B 
build on it as children move up the school and reinforce it in as many different contexts as you can. Now I'm going to show you how I applied this in my assembly using Shakira's song Try Anything from Zootropolis or Zootopia depending on where you watched it. So the movie and the song sends a great message that is really good for developing for assemblies and things like that and it's really multi-purpose in that way. Here I'm going to talk you through the rest of my PowerPoint in terms of how I used it with children. So PowerPoint is great for developing this type of playing because you can use different parts of the song on different slides and that means you're really spreading out the cognitive load, you're not asking children to retain everything about what they're playing at one time and it also means that it's easy to support them by standing at the front and pointing at what they're doing on that slide at the time. Let's look at how that works. Here, because I wanted to have four different groups playing together, I've set up four different areas on the slide. And using this type of system regularly and teaching children that this is how things are going to be represented is something that you can really do to support colleagues as well. And I'm going to put the rhythm for the, each part of the song in their space on the slide. This can work really well because something I like to do when we're all in the same hall together I can still do virtually if I'm doing this as a virtual lesson and that's to engage my colleagues, the teachers that are stood in front of the children in their own spaces in supporting. Um, Ken Robinson makes a great point about this in one of his books The Element and he says the most powerful method of improving education is to invest in the improvement of teaching and the status of great teachers and I think getting teachers on board gradually to help when you're doing something like this can work really well. If we were stood in a hall together I'd be getting them out the front to lead groups in the room and supporting them through that and I can ask them to do a similar thing when they're in their own spaces. The key to this I think is to set them up for success. Teachers don't mind helping if they know what they're going to be asked to do in advance and if you give them sufficient resources and material to do this and we'll have a little look about how to do that later as well. So this song has lots of great catchy rhythms, it's upbeat, there are positive messages to discuss with children and rhythms that you can say in your head as well. Um, and I think your head voice is really important in music. Let's just go to the first actual section. Now I've put the words on here, I've also snipped the music. The, the track that I'm using for this come from the resources available on Sing Up. Sing Up is primarily a UK based music resource website but it does have international packages as well and I think it's just a brilliant brilliant subscription facility to help teachers because there's so much material on there that is open to being used at different ways. So here's one way I've used it, I've made a slide you can see with the lyrics, part of the song and one of the things we, we would do if we were singing it at the moment would be to sing through it first. We can listen to the example version with before we use the backing track but here I've snipped that melody now that part that goes oh 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 which is really catchy and repetitive has such a good rhythm to it that actually is quite hard to describe to children but they can definitely sing that in their head with their inside voice and then clap along to it out with externally and I think developing that internal voice is something that's really really important in music so here let's look at what I've done for this opening part of the song you can see I've got my sound buttons down the side that I've copied to this side ready to use and what I've done is I've made four different parts to start with but I'm going to talk you through how I'm gradually increasing the load and the level of difficulty in an age-appropriate way so here I've only actually split the beginning into two parts. The early years and the year one, two children are just going to play on the pulse. And I think it's always important to have somebody playing the pulse at all times because it allows you to then hook into that and children to listen to that when they're doing other things. So at the beginning, you can see I've got two rhythms. Just the pulse going repeatedly. And then in the upper junior children, the year three, fours and five, sixes, they're doing the O, 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 O rhythm. But rather than just clapping it, we're doing we're trying to split it up. So they've got the chest slap at the beginning, and then a clap at the end to punctuate it. So that sounds like and you can see I've compromised on the way I've shown it, which is worth considering that I haven't put the chest slap icon in for every note, I've just put it in until it changes. And again, these are things to agree with children over time. Let's look at how this evolves. 
So when I then go to the second slide, you can see that I've started to step things up a little bit. And I'm gonna first of all look with you at what I'm doing with the early years. So what I'm doing is getting them to keep the pulse. The most important skill to start with when you're at the smallest end of school is to be able to keep the pulse. So what's happening here is that at the beginning, they're keeping the pulse by clapping. Then on the next slide, they're keeping the pulse by slapping their legs. And as it moves through the song, you can see they're keeping the pulse with these crotchet beats every time. But what they're doing changes. And this means that the teacher stood at the front helping them, if it's not me at this time, can reinforce this all the way through. Something else I've done particularly for them to reinforce this, and again, setting the teachers up for success, and this is a tip that I really like and that they really thank me for, is that I'm showing them what's coming next all the time. So although here, here's what they're actually going to be doing. Down in the very bottom, I've copied the picture that they're going to next. So the next one there is the leg slap. And if I go to that slide, leg slaps, and the next one there is the chest slap there, and so on and so on. So that's a way that I'm really supporting colleagues as we go along by let, get setting them up for success when they're stood at the front of the room. And again, this is something I've done for myself as well in the past that just helps me to know what's coming up and be a little bit more aware of what's happening. So before we go any further, let's just take tip seven from the slide that we're looking at, which is use rhythms from the sung parts of the song. Here you can see for the green and red parts, the upper juniors, we're using that oh, 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 oh rhythm because it's so catchy that they can play it without any other support. And they start off playing it together and then gradually play it in smaller and smaller groups. So when working with the children, I'd normally screen snip the notation of the music next to the lyrics to get them used to using it and for those that are learning it to be able to already refer to it. Now I haven't included it on this one because it's not my notation to share with you. I've rewritten the o o o o o part because that's just a small part I can put here but generally in school I'd use the licensed music that I'm allowed to use. Well now tip eight is to build progressively more challenging parts as the songs move along and let's have a look at some of the ways I've done that. We said with the early years part we've kept the rhythm the same. Something I've done with year one and two, let's look through their part, is to gradually change what they're doing but to give them just a set of rhythms to learn. So here, if we go on to this part of the song, they've got one, two, three and four, which they're starting off doing with stamping. That's their first rhythm. Let's move on and then they've got one and two and three and four. go and as we move on you can see next they've got that original rhythm again one two three and four but this time they're doing and then if I go to the next section they go back to their previous rhythm one and two and three and four again they're just changing how they're doing it And then as we move through, again, they're jumping back and forth between those two rhythms. So I've increased the cognitive load as we go along because they're swapping between two rhythms and each time they're changing the parts of the body they use to do it. But they've only got two different rhythms to be able to repeat in their inside voice in their heads to do it. So that's one way to scaffold them. Now let's have a look at what we're doing with the year threes. So the year three fours here to start with are doing the oh, 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 oh part. Let's move on. Then they do it on their own without the year five sixes supporting them. And then they move on to what is a much more complex stamping rhythm, which they absolutely adore. That's great fun and, not, and great fun if you're not on the ground floor of a building too. And then as it moves on, they then move into a new rhythm, one and two and three, four. There we go. And then the same rhythm, but with different actions. And you can see as it moves forward, they keep that new rhythm, but the actions they've got change in difficulty each time. So here, they're only learning one rhythm, one and two and three and four, but the actions change and they start to change more frequently as well, which again has that, that challenge factor to it. Let's go and have a look at what the oldest children, the five sixes, are doing. To start with, they are doing the same rhythm as the other group. Then they go to the stamping rhythm on their own. There we go. 
then they go back to that syncopated rhythm. Then they move on to a more challenging version of the earlier rhythm. And that's more complicated because they can't just continue to tap, they have to know where they are in the rhythm. And again, even right down to lining up the first notes in each beat above each other really helps children just to understand what they're doing here. And finally, let's see what they do after that. You can see here they've got that, that half that speed rhythm, one and two and three and four round, but they're changing what they do on it. And in this way, you can try marching arch rhythms as well. So rather than playing on both knees at the same time, and then doing claps, you can do left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right at the end, and get children to explore what works better for them and what makes a better, more consistent sound. Finally, here we've got a slightly different symbol I've added that means you're clapping on the strong beats, the first and the third, and in between it's a big hands movement as if you're doing glad hands in the air. One and two and. And in that way, it really punctuates the song and puts a sound that is very different in its pace on top of all the others, which is what we're looking for children again to develop the ideas around. Just to give you a flavour what these would sound like, I've dropped them all into Audacity and just layered them over each other just to see how it would sound. It's a little bit sad without the actual music, but you get some of the idea. Got a video coming up on using Audacity to support singing and body percussion, so I'll link it here once it's available as well. So I've linked down below to the page on my website where you can download that PowerPoint presentation. And remember, you can find your own backing track to that through however you, however you get them. YouTube often has lots of backing tracks as well that you can use, and use my scoring to support you using that. You can also rework all those graphics. You're welcome to use them for other songs and build those sections in songs of your own. Another quick tip when using tracks with PowerPoint is that if you're putting the track on the slide, you want to control how it plays. Here I can play it straight off the slide, whether I'm presenting or not. When I go to playback, I want to decide how it plays. So something I want to do is decide when it starts playing, in click sequence or when I click on it, probably when I click on it. And then this checkbox here, play across slides, is really important because I want to move between the slides of the presentation but I want the song to keep playing across all of them without stopping when I change slide. So I would want to tick that box. So tip nine is to set yourself up for success. Now experienced teachers and music teachers will tell you this, if you're, if you're new to doing this, something to do is to visualize how you want it to go. Um, I pulled some quotes out of my second brain notebook in OneNote that I'm just gonna share with you. Um, and one of them is by Carolyn Goider, who wrote Gravitas, which is a great book on speaking publicly and running meetings successfully and any type of presentation. I think there's lots of parallels to education in this. And she says, to be aware of your inner helmsman, the person inside that is your coach and your critic. It's the voice that helps you identify what you're doing. Charles Duhigg, who's written a lot of books on productivity, has this to say in his book Smarter, Faster, Better, which talks about good decision making. And he says, good decision making is contingent on a basic ability to envisage what happens next. And this is a really good point. He talks about setting out in your mind how you think things are going to go, right down to rehearsing what happens. And this is something that I talk about with teachers all the time. Think about what will you do if. So if the lesson goes this way, what will I do? If this thing happens, what would I want to do in response to it? And having those mental rehearsals in mind already, when you're leading any sort of music, choirs, lessons, ensemble work, bands, this is a really good thing to do in advance, to work through your mental rehearsal of what you think should happen. So I've linked down below to all those books because I think they all have a lot to say about education and teaching and music teaching especially. As well as this, if you're interested in the way I use OneNote to capture everything, I've linked down below to a OneNote course that I have available on Skillshare. And the link down there will give you a two week free trial of Skillshare, which is more than enough time to watch this and any other course you might enjoy. 
So I've linked to that PowerPoint as well on my website. You're welcome to download it. And perhaps while you're on the website, you might consider signing up for my monthly newsletter that gives you the summary of all of these videos, as well as all the resources I find online, tips, and anything else that I think is useful in teaching music. So I hope you've got value out of this video. If you have, please hit the like button and consider subscribing so that you receive the other videos each week when they're made. There's two other videos linked on screen now that you might consider watching. Thanks for being here. See you again.